Right, here's an easy video tutorial for you. So you've done your animation, you're happy with everything, fixed all your timings, now you want to make a video. Now if you've been following the other tutorials I've been making, then we've covered a lot of this already, because inevitably at the end of every tutorial we make a video. But I'm going to explain some of the options with you. I'm also going to show you how you can use the video joiner, which is a little piece of software that comes with MovieZoo and is, has installed itself uh, in the same folder as uh, your MovieZoo installation. So over in MovieZoo I need to get three videos made. Now luckily I've already made two of them and I just need to make the third one. It's quite a simple little video but all it means is I need to change the colour of the sky to green and the colour of the ground to green. I need to make a character the sky. We'll ch change his skin to be a kind of greeny yellow colour yeah, just just like that, I suppose. And we will rotate him round to face the camera. That way. I'd also like to bring the camera in a little bit. So that he's more on screen. And the next thing I'm going to do is create the word 3. All will become crystal clear in a minute. Let's just lower that down so that it's in the shot and push it back so we can read it. Now we're just going to animate him uh, doing something daft. A happy strong animation. Up he goes. And that is the extent of the, uh, the movie that we've made. Okay, so we're happy with everything. <clears throat> we go to video, make video, and it's these options that I'd like to explain to you. So when you come to make a video, you get this big preview screen and you get the make video timeline right here. You can press play and you can watch your entire animation play out in this this video. You'll see that your animation becomes uh, tagged with a movie zoo watermark. I'm afraid uh, that's, uh, that's fairly permanent. And you can also at this stage pick some of the sizes that you'd like your video to be in. So let's go to options and see what comes up. This takes a little while to appear because what it's doing is it's scanning your computer for all your installed codecs um, and video settings. Eventually this little option box pops up. You can choose the resolution or the size of the video that you're going to produce and we've tagged some of these with helpful descriptions. So we've got YouTube standard sizes, YouTube widescreen and then some for broadcasting in America or Britain and other parts of Europe. We also have this HD output, this 720 um, output which is an enormous file and is a high definition. Some codecs don't support that so for now I'm just going to leave it on the standard settings, YouTube standard right there. Okay next thing, codec. Codex. Now you could spend hours explaining codecs to someone but in essence this is like the flavour of your video file that you're going to produce. You might have noticed that some video files are called different things. You get AVI files, MP4s, QuickTimes, WMVs and all that kind of stuff. It's a simplification um, but your choice of file type and your choice of how your video gets compressed such that it's a small file size um, gets sorted out in this field right here. You can see I've got quite a lot installed but for the most part I'm happy with XVID MPEG-4 codec. XVID is a free uh, codec that you can download online. It gives incredibly high quality videos with a very small file size and it spits out file size that YouTube likes, etc, um, etc. Et you can't really pass it through an editing pipeline, so if you've got ambitions to put it through something like Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere, then the XVID format is probably not the best for that. You'd probably go for something uncompressed or close to it. Configure codec. If I press this button, I get a whole bunch of nonsense about XVID that I don't understand, so I'm going to leave that. Anti-aliasing. Right. It's possibly not easy for you to see, but let's switch this off. Yeah, it's probably not going to show up in the, uh, in the video right now. Anti-aliasing is a way of softening and improving the edges around things. Computer graphics, like the graphics that MovieZoo produces, tend to have little jagged edges around things. 
it's not that clear at the size I've captured. But if you switch on anti-aliasing, it makes these edges a little bit smoother. It just gives your final video um, a softness that brings it closer to what you'd expect to see on a television. So I'm happy with all of that stuff. Let's go OK. Now, rewind, make video. This is going to ask me the type of file that I want. AVI, Movies of AVI. It knows to pick AVI because that links to my choice of codec that I chose in the option box. Anyway, here's the tip for you. Buried underneath this, we've got Targa Sequence. Now, if you're a professional, you'll know what this means. This basically will render out your Movies of Video in a series of still frames. Now, a Targa Sequence is probably the most robust and professionally accepted format of video that you can find. A target sequence will go through anything, it's broadcast quality, it will go through a third party editing program, blah blah blah. But it does give you a sequence of still images and an accompanying sound file. So if you wanted to push your video through an editing pipeline, this is the one I'd choose. But for now, I don't, so I'm just going to go to Movies with API. And guess what, I'm going to call this video 3. You can see I've already made 1 and 2. Let's make 3. The codec I've chosen pulls up a little progress bar, moves the renders, and then say, set tells me that everything's fine. So if I was happy with that, I'd click OK, but because this is the video joiner tutorial, I'm going to click video joiner. That's going to load up a little program that comes shipped with MovieZoo. Now if you want to load the video joiner at another point in time, you can access it through the start menu. If you go to start programs, and movies out, you'll find the video joiner sits in there. Unfortunately, I'm not capturing the portion of my screen that shows you the start menu, so you'll just have to believe me. So, video joiner, it's a list. Let's add videos to the list. Let's add one, two, and three with a multi select. Oh, but look what's happened. It's brought them in in the wrong order. It's going to make a video. It's going to, this is going to be the first one that you see, then it's going to go to this one, then it's going to that one it's in the wrong order. So I'm going to take video number three and move it down. So now we've got one, two, three, that's all in the good order. Okay, next. After a moment's thought, it comes up with the video joiner window. Again, you get to choose your codec in here. Let's just keep it as XFIDs and hit join videos. It's going to open up this Explorer window and it's going to ask me to type in a name. I'm going to call them Joined and save it. We get more progress bars come up. We get movies who are doing a little bit of thinking as it joins these three together. Okay, so I'll go away and find that now. It should be down. It's opened up there. Let's bring that. So let's see the result of our joined video. We've got one joined nicely onto two, which as you'd expect joins nicely onto three. So why did we bother putting a video joiner in with MovieZoo? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd give you this tip, this production tip, if you're ever making a MovieZoo animation. Think of it in small chunks make little scenes, little separate sets and chapters at a time and then join them later on. And the video joiner lets you do this. 